Ladies, I first have to apologize for my appearance, the way I look. Oh, look at that. And secondly, for being so late. But I in, had to go to the doctor to get an injection in my hip joint. Enough about that. Let's get on with the news, okay? This is pre-med two, week four, and <coughs> blood and lymphatic system. Now, you have a list of the terms right here. And you also have a list of the terms um, that are highlighted. Hodgkin's disease is definitely highlighted. Now, you'll see RBC, which is red blood cell, um, HCT, which is hematocrit, AIDS, acquired immune deficiency syndrome, HGB is hemoglobin, and uh, CBC is complete blood count, and WBC is white blood count. We're going to cover these a lot more in the notes, so don't frank be frantic if you didn't get it, all right? So, all right, we're going to start with what's officially called page two. <coughs> Blood and lymph. Everything's highlighted that you need to know. If there's anything you need to add, I will let you know. Okay, first of all, humans have four different blood types. You have A, B, A, B, and O. A, B is the universal recipient. They can receive any type of blood. O is the universal donor. And look what I put underneath. However, there is another factor that you got to consider, and we're going to get into that later. But just remember, look, easy to remember. O is the universal donor. And donor has two O's in it. Can't miss it, all right? What does blood do? Well, it transports nutrients, gases, and waste. Um, we have hormones in our bodies. Chemical messengers. Every month, ladies should know, your hormones go up and down like a roller coaster, all right? They travel in blood. They fight infections, white blood cells, and AB are antibodies. That's the good guys. Antibodies, antigens, <clears throat> not so good. And they also maintain a constant environment for the body. Now, blood is composed of cells. The red blood cell, like I've said before, looks like a lifesaver with a, a dip in the middle, no hole, all right? So it, they, they are composed of 45% uh, cells and 55% plasma, and I'll show you why. This is a red blood cell, okay? Here it is. Here's a fish, okay, in the water. Got it? This is a fish when you take it out of water. Red blood cell is, in fact, all the blood cells are no different. This is a red blood cell out of plasma. This is a red blood cell in plasma. Plasma is the liquid that red blood cells move in, just like a fish in water, okay? Now, cells, <coughs> excuse me, you have three types of cells. Erythrocytes, which are red blood cells. Leuco, which means white, white blood cells and uh, they make up 45% of your blood, and thrombocytes, thrombo means clot, and technically they're called platelets, all right? So thrombocytes or platelets help the blood to clot. Red blood cells, we're gonna talk about those right now. Erythrocytes, they are biconcave disc shape. That means they're like this. So you can have hemoglobin and nutrients and CO2 that you're breathing out from your lungs. It's got to get out somehow, all right? All of these things riding on the red blood cell. So you got plasma, you got the red blood cell moving in the plasma, and then you got everything on top of the red blood cell, all right? <clears throat> red blood cells carry hemoglobin, which is abbreviated HGB. Hemi means iron pigment. Globin, okay, we're going to get to that in a second but it gives blood its red color, Hemi, Hemi does. Think about it, you have an old bicycle. It's been left out in the yard for years. And you go outside and you look at it and what's happened to it? Didn't it rust? Well, that's basically what hemoglobin, the color of hemoglobin, all right? Hemoglobin, <coughs> the globin is a blood protein. That's what carries the oxygen on the red blood cell. Now, oxygen plus hemoglobin give blood its red color. Blood is not blue. I don't care what you look in your veins and see, it's not blue. <clears throat> now, believe it or not, you need one system needs another system needs another system. 
your circulatory system or your blood system, <coughs> excuse me, blood cells are formed in bone marrow. Now, who'd have thunk it? Who'd have thunk it? Oh, thunk, excuse me. Who would have thought <coughs> that red blood cells are made in the red bone marrow? There is a hormone called erythropoietin, and it's secreted by the kidney. Now we're bringing in the urinary system to stimulate red blood cell production that originates in bone marrow, all right? The spleen, now that's a cute little organ, all right? It's highlighted. It's near the stomach, it's actually behind the stomach. And it helps with red blood cell storage, it stores them. It helps with their elimination, and it also helps with their production. Red blood cells only live about 120 days. Then they have to go to the old nursing home for red blood cells, and that happens to be the liver. The liver's job is to break the red blood cells down, okay? They're not needed anymore, they break them down. And <clears throat> what, that actually comes out in your, your stool, and that's sometimes what gives urine its yellow color, a little bit, okay? All right, um, let's see, they, uh, oh, well, when they get in the spleen, I like this part. When they get in the spleen and they gotta be destroyed, there's a cell called a macrophage. Think of Pac-Man, if y'all aren't too young. Think of Pac-Man, and that's what it does. They engulf, or they encircle a red blood cell and go in like cowboys and Indians. Mm -mm -mm. Really good stuff. I don't think so. White blood cells are known as leukocytes. They fight infection. That is highlighted. It is the immune response in your body. Now, there are a lot fewer white blood cells than there are red blood cells. So the blood cells all together up here, number two, all of these blood cells, I was incorrect, all of them make up 45% of your blood. Plasma makes up 55% of your blood. Plasma is the clear liquid. We're gonna get into that in a little bit too. All right, you got five different types of white blood cells where you only have one type of red blood cell. <coughs> the first one is basophil. That contains heparin, and we're gonna find out with hemophilia, you, you don't need heparin. Heparin and histamine. You ever get the sneezes? Histamine in the nose? Eosinophil, that's another one. It elevates or rises with an allergic response. They're expecting it to get high with the Sahara dust that's blowing over. So if you got itchy nose and watery eyes and all that good stuff, well, it's only gonna get worse. All right, um, let's see. Neutrophil, now these are phagocytes, not a phag, but a phagocyte. And they're just like that macrophage. They engulf and destroy, ooh, ooh they like to eat. Now, all three of the ones I just listed are known as granulocytes. What that means is if you looked at them under a microscope in their plasma, you would see the cell, but in the liquid, you would see little grains of sand in it. So that's how they identify these cells. Each one of these cells has to look different under a microscope or the doctor doesn't know what kind of infection you have. Okay, the next two, mono meaning one, it's on the test, mono means one or singular. Mono is also phagocytic, Pac-Man. <coughs> Lymphocyte helps with their immune response. It fights antigens, which are the bad guys. Right now, they're looking for people that have the COVID-19 antibodies, which means they've already had the disease or even a mild case of it, but their body's built up an immunity, so if it comes around again, they don't get it. All right, that's just like a vaccine but it's a natural vaccine. So <clears throat> you have <clears throat> the antibodies in your body to fight off the antigens, which are the bad guys. Okay, now the last two are agranulocytes. They don't have granules in their plasma. All right, we're on page number three. And agranulocytes, you can see right there. All right, we're moving down to letter C. Thrombocyte, thrombo means clot. It's also known as a platelet. These two are formed in the bone marrow. What's their function? To help blood to clot or to coagulate. Now this requires vitamin K. I worked in labor and delivery and every new baby, newbie, 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 newbie baby just had the cord cut. The minute we got the baby, put it on the table, baby got two things, 
silver nitrate in the eyes, and just in case the mama had STD and the baby opened the eyes in the birth canal, and an injection in the thigh of vitamin K. I mean, how is that to welcome you to the world? They slap you on the behind, and then they stick stuff in your eyes, and then you give you a shot. But anyway, th because the reason we do that is because we don't know who is the hemophiliac, who has the condition where their blood doesn't clot. So it's better to be safe than sorry. So it won't hurt them. Everybody gets the little injection. Yes, you got it too. All right? Believe me, I've been around that long. <clears throat> All right. Plasma, again, plasmapheresis is the separating of actually plasma from the blood cells. Now, there's proteins in plasma. None of these are on the test. But you have albumin. You have globulins. It almost sounds like Halloween. Fibrinogen, which helps to clot and prothrombin. Let's say you get a cut, okay? And that means the skin, which is normally closed, is now open. Anything can get in there, anything. So these white blood cells are immediately gonna start going to the cut. That's why sometimes you'll notice that maybe it feels a little warm and it's a little red. That's because there's a lot of business going on around that cut. So what happens is, <coughs> I'm sorry, what happens is, um, there's a series of things that happen. It's like dominoes. One thing hits another, hits another. Fibrinogen turns into prothrombin and turns eventually turns into fibrin, which actually, the, the white blood cells are so neat. And the, I mean, the thrombocytes are so neat. They throw out a web like Spider-Man and they actually form a gauze over the cut. And guess what that gauze is called? We call it here a scab. Now, the skin underneath is going to take 21 days before it's ready to come to the surface. Remember, that skin wasn't ready to come yet, but it got cut, so it has to go early. So it's going to take 21 days. Now, if you peel that scab off before that, you're going to have to start the whole process all over again. A new web has to be formed. A new um, gauze has to be placed over it, and you got to wait again. All right, blood types. We talked about these in the beginning. Four, A, B, A, B, and O. O is the universal donor. A, B is the universal recipient. Now, you think that's important? All right, here's an example. If type A is the donor, that means they already have the antigen to which to any other blood type would be a foreign substance. Remember, antigens to anybody else is bad. If type B is the recipient and they received this type A blood, their body would build up antibodies and response to the antigens. This is not good. Way back in the 40s and 50s, babies were dying when they were born. They didn't know why. And it was an African-American physician that found out, he was a scientist also, that when you're given the wrong blood type, <clears throat> that's what happens, okay? You have to receive the same blood type. What he also discovered was what we're gonna get to in a second, the RH factor. But remember, O is the universal donor. AB could have received that B blood. AB could have gotten A blood. AB could have gotten O blood. Except remember, they said there's one more little factor. And here's where it is, okay? Not on the test, RH factor. Besides each cell having an A, B, A, B, or O, antigen on the surface. Now remember, antigens are not bad if you make them, all right? But each cell also carries an RH antigen. If your blood is RH positive, that means you carry the, the antigen. If your blood is RH negative, you don't have the antigen. Now, RH factor, here it is, was first observed in the rhesus monkey and was discovered by an African-American physician. They were given babies positive blood. Well, they didn't know. Positive blood to a negative baby. These babies would literally turn blue and die because the bloods were fighting each other. <clears throat> and it wasn't until you know, maybe the late 40s, early 50s that this was discovered. Now, RH factors, this is not on a test, this is just FYI, and I happen to be one of them. If the female is RH positive and the male is RH, I'm sorry, negative, there's no problem. She has it, he doesn't, she can't get anything from him. If the female is negative and the male's negative, no problem, they don't have it. If they're both positive, 
No problem. Oh, flip the page. The problem arises if the mother, which I am, is RH negative and my husband is RH positive. Now, it doesn't usually affect the first pregnancy, but they still give you the injection, okay? Just because. So, <clears throat> um, the first baby, it doesn't affect. But sometimes maybe some of that blood mixed with yours, and now you built up antibodies against B positive blood. Well, what if your next baby is B positive? You're going to have that same thing that the doctor was discussing and, and fought for and discovered. You bought the baby's blood is not going to match. All right? So that's why you have to get the Rogam. Not Rogam for your hair. Rogam injection. All right? And you have, now they, I used, I only got it like once after each delivery. Now, you also get it after any miscarriage that you have or abortion that you have because it may affect subsequent babies. All right, blood clotting. After this, we're going to take maybe a little quickie and go into intro. Coagulation of blood should take no longer than 15 minutes. Platelets, those thrombocytes, they clump together to form a clot to stop the bleeding. Now, is it the prettiest thing in the world? Not necessarily, but don't. That's like when somebody gets a severe cut. I mean, like a jigsaw cut across them. You're going to wrap your t-shirt or something around that cut. Apply direct pressure and don't move it. I don't care if that t-shirt gets saturated with blood. Do not pull it off. Get something else to put on top of it. Because underneath there, a clot is trying to form to stop the bleeding. And if you pull that shirt off, you're in trouble. You can imagine. All right, uh, number three. Here's where vitamin K comes in. Vitamin K, and this is on the test, is necessary for blood clotting. Now, it can be found in vegetables such as carrots and those with beta carotene. Immediately after birth, the newborn is given an injection of vitamin K as a prophylactic measure, as a preventative measure. You also have factor eight and factor nine. These are both protein factors in the blood clotting situation. These protein factors, such as prothrombin, here's the, the sequence. When you start the clot, you have prothrombin. That turns into thrombin, which then changes into fibrinogen. And finally, it produces a fibrin clot. That's the sequence of forming the clot and the scab. Without the proteins listed above, <clears throat> the ability to change, um, and their ability to, to change any tiny cut on your skin and you'd be hemorrhaging. Now, next two are on the test. Hemophilia. That is the inability of your blood to form a clot, causing excessive bleeding due to a congenital lack of clotting substance. I read that whole thing. Nobody raised their hand and said, what's congenital mean? Congenital means you're born with it. Acquired means it's something you got after you were on your own, out of the womb. But congenital, you're born that way. Heparin, which was also on our first page, Heparin is an anticoagulant found in blood and tissue that prevents new clots from forming. And you're going to say, Miss Oda, it sounds contradictory. We have heparin in our blood because if we didn't, we'd have blood clots all over our, in our veins and in our arteries, all right? But we don't have enough of it to where it's going to clot our whole blood. But hemophiliacs usually are males, not always. And if you think about it, uh, every 28 days, if you're following my drift for ladies, when you had that, you'd also have hemophilia and pfft, all right. Okay, number eight, we need to add. I didn't have this on the notes. I'm sorry. We need to add this. Number eight is the term bleeding time. Bleeding time. And that is the time it takes for a small puncture to be plugged. I'll say it again. The time it takes for a small puncture to be plugged. Like when my husband checks his blood, he sticks himself with a little lancet. Bleeding time should take no more than five minutes. All right, that, that's about it. Any more than that, you may have a problem. <coughs> All right, pathological conditions. 
Let's see how we do. Now, pathological conditions. Patho means disease. So that's what these are, disease-causing conditions. The first one is anemia. Emia itself, E-M-I-A, okay? It means kind of blood. Or You put A in in front of it, it means just the opposite, not rich. Anemia, you have a deficiency of red blood cells. So if you have a deficiency in red blood cells, you got a deficiency in anything that hitches the ride on a red blood cell. Hemoglobin and all the proteins and all the vitamins and the gases and all that other good stuff, all right? Now, there's different types of anemia. The first one is aplastic, and that means it's acquired. It's something you get as you get older, all right? You weren't born with it. Hemolytic, now, that's the congenital anemia. You're born that way. There's also a sickle cell anemia. Red blood cells, like I said, are shaped like a circle. And your veins and arteries look like the inside of a hose. And round things can kind of get through it and pass each other up and all that kind of good stuff. Sickle cell, it's shaped like a sickle. Okay? And you try to get them to go through a little a hose, no, it's not going to work. They're going to get stuck on each other and latch on each other. And that is called a crisis. And I had a student one time, a male student, very nice, very nice, very good student. And he had this type of sickle cell anemia. And unfortunately, he passed away from it because he was having crisis. There. He was so jaundiced because his liver wasn't working. He was so jaundiced or yellow. The eye, whites of his eyes were yellow. Poor baby, his skin was yellow. So the sickle cell is nothing to play with. All right, pupura. Pupura are multiple pinpoint hemorrhages and an accumulation of blood under the skin. All right, you put the CP, I mean, CP, you put the blood pressure cuff on. You pump it up to 300, I don't know why, and you forget the patient's got this on it and you start talking to somebody. And you do that for a few minutes and then you come back, oh, I'm so sorry. And you start to release the valve and you get a blood pressure reading. But when you take that cuff off, the patient may have a line of little bitty, bitty, bitty dots, okay? And that's what pupura is, all right? It's also like petechiae, but it's all, that's pupura. It's multiple pinpoint hemorrhages. You broke a few capillaries because you left it too tight too long. All right, and the next one is leukemia. Leukemia is an increase in cancerous cells in white blood cells, all right? That is leukemia. There's all different types of leukemia. When gra my grandson, I call him dinosaur, his name's Tony. When he was fighting neuroblastoma, there were a lot of kids in the hospital with leukemia, a lot. And I didn't know it, but sometimes kids that have special needs develop leukemia more than kids that don't have special needs. Who knew? All right, the next one. Oh, don't even come home and tell me you got this one mononucleosis the correct address the correct definition is it's acute infectious disease with enlarged lymph nodes and spleen it's called the sucking face disease don't get it it's the kissing disease it's an increase in lymphocytes monocytes or hemoglobin now it's acute meaning it's short-lived or it can be chronic you think the symptoms have gone away and it's still doing damage. And what is it damaging? Your spleen. So mononucleosis, usually when you get kids together first time, like in junior high school, that's when they start with, not drinking after each other, it's the same way, okay? So mono, mono is like the worst flu you have ever had. And I mean, it makes you wish how you were dead because it's just that bad. All right, mono means one. Um, multiple myelomas, not on the test, but that are malignant cells of the bone marrow. Embolus is a clot that suddenly blocks a blood vessel or lymph vessel. An embolus is bad. That is a moving blood clot, and it can move and travel anywhere in your circulatory system. We had an instructor one time in the morning, she had a blood clot in her legs. By lunchtime, it was in her lungs, all right? So, I'm going to try and finish up. There's several you have to write in. I'm sorry if I didn't write them in for you before. You have to write in the combining form immuno, I-M-M-U-N-E, 
slash O. And that is protection. That's what that means, protection. Then you have toxo, T-O-X slash O. And that is poison. Now we did bleeding time. The one I didn't give you yet is coagulation time. C-O-A-G-U-L-A-T-I-O-N, coagulation time. Now bleeding time was for a little puncture to stop. This is the time it takes for a clot to form in a test tube. If you draw blood and put the test tube in its holder, coagulation time should take about 15 minutes, all right? All right, we're gonna go ahead and stop here for pre-med. We're gonna pick up tomorrow with labs and I promise you it will not be as late. I am so, so sorry, but I, I couldn't take the hip anymore. It was, ugh. So love y'all, God bless, and I will see you in a little bit with intro.